everyone, welcome back to episode 13 of Cabrillo. I'm Prez, and today we're moving away from Second Skyline, the neighborhood we built in the last episode. We're going to be moving all the way across downtown to this hillside and also the other side of the hillside to build a new neighborhood called Cavello. First, we're going to look at Inspiration Station here. I just want to show you that um, basically the entire western half of Oregon and other parts of the state and even northern California just covered in these clearings created by the logging industry you know, over time. Um, it's just so prominent in the Pacific Northwest, uh, and I want to make sure we incorporate it here. So we're going to be building kind of a living museum, a lumber mill that's still operational just to show people how things used to work. We're also going to be building a kind of nature park right next to downtown, um, kind of inspired by Forest Park in Portland, Oregon. Um, not going to look exactly like it, it's just the idea is this really high quality nature right next to downtown. Uh, first, we're going to begin working on the road layout, though, for our new neighborhood called Cavello. Um, so Cavello is part of Cabrillo. It's not a different municipality. and It's got a really, really interesting history. Um, it's kind of partially industrial and historically kind of working class, but a lot of it isn't as well, though. Um, it's, it's kind of a mixed income place. And the, the two main uh, influential groups in Cavello's politics are um, the working class folks who have historically worked in the uh, lumber mill um, kind of near near the um, the neighborhood uh, that we're going to build but uh, over time have transitioned into you know, different jobs and maybe the service sector and also warehouses nearby um, th those folks are basically just trying to prevent um, themselves from being displaced from the neighborhood because it's so close to downtown um, and it is so ripe for uh, tons of developers to come in and build huge high density apartment buildings. So th they don't want to be forced out, right? And there are also NIMBYs uh, up in the hills. Um, and NIMBYs are uh, kind of a group that's very prominent in California politics and then elsewhere as well. Um, if you're from Europe, I'm really not sure how much this concept applies where you are, but in North America, this is one of the most um, prominent groups in, in political life, especially locally and on the state level. NIMBYs, um, NIMBY stands for Not In My Backyard. These are folks that want to preserve their neighborhoods, right? We're going to talk about this theme of historical preservation and natural preservation in this video um, and how it's often used as a pretext for preventing good densification of, of a neighborhood that really needs to happen. Um, but they'll use these various pretexts to try to prevent change in their neighborhood and um, avoid the responsibility of having new housing built in their neighborhood that you know, contributes to regional housing needs. Um, and um, really, in the end, it's with this goal of keeping the neighborhood the same and preserving their property values. And um, th this might sound like a you know, what's the problem with this? Can't people just live in their, you know, their own neighborhoods with without change and just decide that this is what they want? Well, this is the problem. A lot of the time, this leads to neighborhoods that really, really need to be upzoned. Neighborhoods like this that have great bones, a streetcar suburb that has good transit connections to the rest of the city, just not changing over time. And um, these historical preservation pretexts are really hurtful uh, a lot of the time. Because housing advocates don't want to turn this, you know, this hillside filled with uh, beautiful old Victorians and you know other buildings. They, they don't want to turn into a huge um, haven for apartment developers. It, it's not like that. Um, really, what housing advocates might want for an area like this is just to legalize building fourplexes and duplexes and ADUs or granny flats. Um, you know, in these on, on these lots. Um, buildings that don't change the character of the neighborhood really significantly at all, but really, really add to the amount of units in the region and allow Cabrillo to um, to grow equitably, where people are able to live um, in different parts of the city, no matter what their income level is, and um, you know, prevent displacement by making sure that um, new development in an area is offset by, um, by new units for people of all uh, income levels. Another thing I wanted to communicate about Cavello is that it's not a um, place that is ex exclusively um, high income. And, and it's really important here is that even places that are kind of mixed income can have NIMBY politics be really prominent. Because the upper class folks up in the hills have prevented upzoning even in these, um, these more mixed income places down um, by this main avenue. And um, I wanted to kind of 
tie this into the Bay Area, places like Berkeley even have a lot of um, NIMBYs. Not as prominent as you know, places like Mill Valley or Palo Alto, but um, if you know Bay Area politics, you you know that you know, these problems aren't you know, the, the problem of just people resisting, you know, even. Um, moderate density increases at all costs. It's not exclusive to exclusive places, um, exclusive neighborhoods. Um, these are these are uh, political fights that happen everywhere. Um, so I don't I don't want to just build tons of different stereotypical communities here. Like the I don't I don't want to just replicate Palo Alto and just say, wow, look at this. This is really easy to see how uh, NIMBY politics has influenced this place. Uh, we will b build places like that in Cabrillo, but I, I want these kind of invisible NIMBYism as well to um, be communicated here. I guess my call to action is to think critically and make sure you don't just accept um, these arguments that we need to preserve a neighborhood's character at all costs by um, keeping it single family. It, it's like allowing duplexes and fourplexes this missing middle density that you're literally not allowed. Like it is illegal to build um, these livable um, kind of mixed density places in most of the country. Um, just allowing duplexes and fourplexes is not going to destroy the the historic character of a neighborhood or the natural environment surrounding the neighborhood. Um, you know, if anything, it's just going to make the neighborhood more lively, and um, it's going to really connect it to the broader region and make it so it's not as exclusive. And, and there are so many arguments that. Um, that are that are made in favor of preventing new housing units from being built and i'm just talking about this so much because it's so so you know inescapable here in california um this is just kind of how like pro preserving property values is the primary goal of homeowners throughout the state and it really can't be forever and also recognizing that um you know property values need not go down as a result of increasing density if anything um if we allow people to just literally just allow, it is currently illegal to build duplexes in so much of the state um just allowing people to build these kind of incrementally higher densities that don't change their neighborhood significantly can even increase property values by um by allowing for more units to be rented out or built. And, and so, so I, once again, I just want you to think critically and not just accept um, these these kind of cynical arguments because it's not like building duplexes in Cavello, um, in the, the you know, in Upper Cavello, in the you know, uh, wealthier areas of the neighborhood. It's not like allowing duplexes is going to destroy this lumber mill, this this um, kind of living museum that we're building, which we'll talk about more in just a moment. It's not like it's going to destroy the, um, the the nature park in the area. Um, I know I'm repeating myself a lot. I just want want to make sure that you folks are um, vigilant when you're thinking about all of these issues. And I also want to you know want to know what you think in the comments. This isn't just my um, my project here. We're all doing this together. And, and I also it's it's not just my discussion. I really want to get your input in the comments. So here we're building this living museum, this lumber mill that is, is, you know, along the riverfront. It's been here forever, and it is, there are walking tours, you can just come and explore this place, and actually watch lumber be um, made, processed, um, and even shipped out. It's shipped out on, with, with new locomotives and, um... Uh, train cars, but uh, it's not it, it other than that it is all of the original equipment is being used here It's a really interesting place. I, I don't know much about the production process for lumber But I'm imagining this is a, about what it might look like um, Or might have looked like uh, throughout history and still connected up to this um, this rail line and um, the timber is shipped out uh, from here largely by truck and um, brought here partially by truck and you know partially um, by rail from the hills, but yeah, it, it's just a really interesting little place. Let me know if you have any, any other ideas for living museums I could make in the future where people can actually see, um, you know, like not just not reenactments because this is actual this is actual uh, lumber being created here. Um, just other ideas for this kind of thing because I, th I think it's a a really interesting and interactive way people can learn about the history of their their region. Um, yeah, anyway, so, so I'm also doing just various development in here, working on um, the back lots and just um, filling in these spaces here along this avenue, which is as of yet unnamed. Uh, but while I'm doing this, I want to actually reveal the um, Cabrillo flag. So it's not perfect, um, but I, I 
weirdly enough, Jay and I kind of came to really similar conclusions on what the flag should look like. Um, I ended up with this version. It is a, um, it's kind of similar to the logo of the series, which was initially meant to be a kind of a stupid looking flag that didn't really follow any rules. Um, but I actually think this flag follows a few more rules. Not, it's not, it doesn't follow the rules of making a flag perfectly. It's not like um, whoever designed this watched the TED talk and did the things right. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. There are a lot of bad flags out there. This is not one of them. It's a, it's a pretty okay flag, in my opinion, at least. Um, and I would definitely fly this. I think it um, its symbolism is interesting, very simplistic, but nonetheless interesting. The, the symbolism is basically that the uh, burnt orange refers to the redwoods that are so prominent throughout Cabrillo and Northern California. The blue refers to the ocean and the, and the rivers that are um, that are just everywhere in the city. Uh, and then the bear is trying trying to tie the identity of um, Cabrillo to the the rest of the state. Um, it's the same bear that's in the Californian flag, um, and it's, the, it's there because I really feel like Cabrillo is a special connection to the state of California, and throughout history, its residents have almost felt like they're the ultimate Californians, the ultimate um, Western pioneers kind of going to this um, lost coast, which I guess isn't as lost um, when you've got a huge city here, but this uh, north coast of California, um, it is uh, very secluded, and uh, Cabrians throughout history have really tied themselves and their identity to the, the identity of the state of California and tried to define the state's identity. Um, and they really have, it, it was a really important gold mining town, um, and it was incorporated right before the gold rush, um, but became very shortly a, a much larger settlement as people came in and started um, sifting for gold um, in, the, in the rivers around here and the creeks, and it's... Um, I mean, it's, it's a really interesting history, but I, I think it's a cool feature to tie the identity of Cabrillo to, to the state as a whole. I just love the idea of having a unique flag for the city, and um, we're going to be bringing the flag in-game and placing it, like, everywhere. I'm imagining um, Cabrians are very patriotic to their city. Um, we're, we're gonna be placing the flag in-game soon. Seabud made a, a in-game flag with this design, so thanks so much to, to them for doing that. And then we're also going to be placing um, designs from the, the sports team for UC Cabrillo in-game as well, all around campus. It's gonna be great. I will reveal that in a in a future episode, maybe in the next episode, maybe, maybe after that, but um, just know that both the flag and then also the designs for UC Cabrillo's sports team are going to be revealed soon. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait um, because it really, I feel like that'll add, even though it's a, just, it literally just props in game. I feel like it'll bring the identity of the city together so much. Um, another thing I want to talk about quickly as we're kind of talking about the identity of the city is, you know, th this discussion's happened a lot in the comments and in my, uh, on my discord server um, is that Cabrillo is kind of just Portland and NorCal. That's what it's turned into. And while this is kind of true to some extent, I want to make sure that, um, we carve out a unique path for Cabrillo as, as this really, this, this pioneer city in the, um, in the, um, north coast of California, um, because it's, it's a very unique place and it's not simply Portland superimposed on, um, on Northern California. It is a unique place. I understand why you'd want to think it's that way. And that's kind of how I've, um, built it to some extent over time. Um, but it really, it's more than that. It's, it's a unique place. Um, it's got a combination of the architecture you might find in the Pacific Northwest and maybe the architecture you might find in the Bay Area. Um, it's, I mean, it, it's got a totally different climate from Portland's. It's, um, it's got totally different geography from really, um, anywhere. Just like, just because it's a city with rivers and bridges doesn't mean it's just, um, based on Portland here. And, Obviously, you'll notice the skyline is, is way different. The only reason I'm kind of looking at a lot of places in Oregon for inspiration here, um, not just in Portland, but elsewhere, is that I don't want to just replicate a place in Northern California. But um, we, we also happens to, you know, we've we've happened to be building places that are the places I'm basing on places in Oregon. Um, so, so you'll see uh, the Californian identity of this place um, show itself more over time. Like we're going to build wine country. We're going to build... Um, redwood, you know, parks and stuff like that. It's it's gonna be great. But yeah, right now we're kind of building this this high quality nature park right next to downtown. I'm just using the vanilla gravel trails rather than the nature paths because um, these aren't terrain conforming, and I, I like that because sometimes the um, the 
fire roads that you'll you'll find in in northern california or um really anywhere in california that they'll be super steep and um super uneven they'll go from really flat to really steep and i know this because i ride a gravel bike on them um and i just wanted to make sure that it really is the the contours of the the mountain that define the um the way that path looks rather than the the um path itself um or not really a mountain it's it's kind of a hill it's it's pretty short some of the redwoods that i place i place a couple redwoods on the hillside i'm kind of using a, a you know medium uh scales tree brush here with forest brush i'm placing a bunch of deciduous trees also some conifers just a mix down here and you'll notice that they're just mostly going in these valleys and the lower parts of the the hillside there will be a bunch on the upper parts as well i'm not trying to be super perfect with this i've got huge hillsides throughout the map to, to detail so i'm mostly just experimenting here and maybe i'll even come back and change this in the future because i'm not very used to building uh or very used to not really building designing the, these hillsides um west coast hillsides so I've, I've just kind of had it easy with like new windsor just plopping trees everywhere um on the entire hillside and in, in you know true northeast fashion but it's kind of different in the west coast and there are all these different microclimate factors that you have to consider as well um, but I think the scale of these these trees is nice, um, and they uh, I, I think they look pretty realistic in these valleys here, um, or as Californians call them, canyons. Um, I'm still not used to that actually. Just calling because out east I used to live on the east coast. I thought you know canyons were big like the Grand Canyon, but no, it's it's like um, valleys in the hillside are, are canyons, which is just weird to me. So here we are on the ground level in Cavello. Um, this is truly Bay Area architecture here, as you can see. This is looks like a street I'd see in Berkeley. This looks like a street I'd see in some weird part of SF, uh, in some alternate universe, maybe, because uh, it's got the painted ladies, but also the the kind of lower density um, of maybe other places like in the East Bay. Do let me know where you'd want to live in Cavello here. Um, I think I'd want to live maybe two blocks in from the main street, maybe on a street like this. Um, maybe with a little bit higher density than this, though. Uh, like, I'm thinking fourplexes, um, or at least duplexes on these lots, because a lot of these are single-family. There are some places here that are, are um, uh, more working class. Once again, it's not an ex exclusively upper-class area, and that's what makes it so interesting that it's stayed the same for so long. And I, I used a lot of the King Leno, um, the University City um, content creator pack homes, because they've got a lot of... You know, they're kind of pre-detailed. They've got a lot of debris in the driveways a lot of the time, and they look like the kind of thing you'd see in an older um, Bay Area neighborhood. So you've got all these interesting kind of pulls in this neighborhood in, in different directions, and it's starting to change a little bit, but um, these the main street in here that used to have a streetcar on it's pretty similar to what it used to be. It's got a couple newer buildings, but mostly just the same as it used to be. But wow, look at this shot. Look, look at the, the Amtrak train going through here. But I really love seeing these trains going through here because these are the trains that I see all the time in the Bay Area, these Amtrak California trains. Uh, and I'm just imagining there's a, a new line that connects, well, not new, just a line in our alternate universe that connects the Bay Area to Cabrillo. Anyway, hopefully you all enjoyed. Let me know what you thought of the video in the comment section down below or if you have build suggestions of any sort. That'd be great. Um, but quick shout out to some patrons before we go. Uh, BLG393, CJ Newton, Michael, Michael Gerrar, Nayuki K, and Sam Wobb. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel over on Patreon. If you want to download Cabrillo's save game every time I release a new video or you want to um, you know, get early access to videos or the members-only Discord channel, you could head over to my Patreon and uh, sign up there. Or you could just become a YouTube member that get different benefits like a badge next to your name in the comments. Um, and emojis to use, like there's a military base emoji, stuff like that. You could also support the channel just by leaving a comment, letting me know what you thought of the video or build suggestions you might have. That's also uh, equally appreciated. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for, for joining us today. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and join the Discord in the description. Lots of fun stuff going on over there. Um, but I don't think I have much else today. Uh, hopefully you stick around for the next episode of Cabrillo, and I will see you next time.